Hi everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And it's number 95, and we're very pleased about that because it's nearly 100. <laughs> that we, makes us sound ancient. It doesn't take much to keep us happy. <laughs> no, not really, no. So, no, I think it's just as well, as sometimes we're hearing from you that, you know, just things that are in the middle of so much down stuff and so much nightmarish stuff, we, you, you still send things to us that make us laugh. That's true, yeah. Yeah, I had, um, well, one person was pointing out to me about, I think I called it a, I was talking about how uh, the softer subjects like drama and dance and things, how important they are to give us confidence. Yeah. And um, I mentioned the word, and then I panicked and couldn't remember if it was a viva or a viva when it comes to a spoken exam. And I and I was corrected that viva, yeah. as in viva España, is yes. a car, whereas a viva is a horrible hour-long exam. Oh, right, which I yes. think just yeah. about summed it up. Yeah. And she was also saying she was remembering a while ago when we were talking about because... Um, our friend Chris in Australia very kindly organises it so there are subtitles along our recordings yeah. and that sometimes those are quite odd. And um, she was saying that she'd read about, um, you know, she was remembering about um, us talking about Jesus being able to call down legions of angels. Right. And she said the subtitles said lesions as in l-e-s-i-o-n-s -E -S. <laughs> and she said she got visions of all these poorly angels with uh, horrible grotty lesions all over their bodies and their wings so foul pest <laughs> maybe they were suffering from foul pest <laughs> lesions of angels i know and somebody else was was saying to us that i think she was feeling a bit down really preparing for her church's agm yeah. And she sent you a challenge. She said, did we think that Jesus held AGMs? And if we did, hmm. what sort of things would be well, on the agenda? I think he's going to. <laughs> and when he does, I will read you the little bit of gospel that I have discovered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a very good idea. Some of the stories, though, are very heartening. Um, and there was one sent by somebody which was actually written by another person who has now died. But uh, it was somebody who as far as we can gather, was kind of almost wanting to be a Christian and quite involved, but just kind of lacking something that made it happen. And she went to a meeting and the, the way the meeting was done, the ethos of the meeting was all about love. It wasn't about what you should do or what you shouldn't do. Uh, there were, there were no, no hard corners in it. It was about love and uh, our our key verse is isn't it god so loved the world and the the, the fundament the the base the absolute uh, uh rock on which the church is built mm. is love mm. and that person mm. left that meeting having mm. covered the gap that lay between mm the two sides mm. that she couldn't quite bring together. I thought it was a great, great story. It is interesting. I mean, we we take it that Jesus says, you know, that when you see him, you see the Father, but we don't always make that connection, do we? When we see Jesus, we see somebody very vibrant and lively and rule-breaking and mm. exciting and somebody who was tremendous with people. When we think of God... Even though he says he's, you know, we're told he's the image of yeah. God, I don't think we quite can make the connection in the same way. And just that constant reminder that God so loved the world. Well, it's very interesting that a lot of people, no, not a lot, a number of people I've met and we've met have had one kind of relationship with God, one kind of relationship with Jesus, and another different one with the, the Holy Spirit. Not that there's anything wrong with I think, that. But, I think uh, I do to some extent. Yeah, Adrian. you, think and you said some of the people yeah. you meet. Yeah. I think, I think that's interesting. I think I, I think I do really. Mm. And in a way, I, that, I suppose that's what I was saying. Really, that. Um, yeah. I did wonder whether they live together, like uh, the vets, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, all creatures great and small. No, all creators great and small. <laughs> I, 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 
Yes, they live together. I fell they live for that together. one, Mr. Plath. Siegfried is God, who sometimes yes. gets a bit cross. Yes. And uh, Jesus is James Herriot, who's really nice and helps people with their problems. He has a lot so, of pratfalls. And though. Holy Spirit is Tristan, who who you know uh, quite what he's up to, but he's got some wonderful things to do and say. Mm. Anyway, anyway, I was thinking he's about that. He's also very lazy, Adrian. I think we can only take <laughs> that image true. so far, really. Yeah, just remember I quite that. like it, though. All creators, great and small. Yes, Adrian. They? But this thing about, about what makes the difference I mean, about this person who went to the talk. I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about King David and the fact that he his perspective was suddenly um, explosively changed by two stories coming together. One, the story told to him by the prophet Nathan about a man who took things from another man who was very poor. Took um, his little lamb. His little lamb. Yeah. And the real story of David having seduced Bathsheba and stolen her from her husband yeah. and then arranging for her husband to be killed. And that moment when suddenly Nathan reveals the fact that it's David, suddenly those two ends go crash together. Mm. And it's so violent emotionally uh, that David is um, absolutely mm. staggered by mm. it. Um, mm. So sometimes it does take a... Mm. Uh, a big thing like that. And Jesus used a lot. Why did Jesus use so many stories? Because he did, didn't he? Well, maybe he for the same reason that um, Nathan was encouraged to tell that story about the lamb. Because there's no doubt that, that David was, was absorbed by the story without making the connection it was about him. And then when mm. it was, I mean, at the end of it, Nathan says, it's you, doesn't yeah. he? Mm. And... Uh, I, David can't believe it and suddenly has to make that connection and maybe in lots of Jesus stories there's space for you to think well is that me yeah <laughs> maybe well, that's not, me. not always for the worse either can be no for, no I, I remember our dear old friend George Reindorf who was bishop of various places but uh, not all at once <laughs> no not all at once <laughs> he, he was very parsonical but he was a great storyteller but he used to say to us have you noticed Jesus always said, what think ye? Mm. You know, people would ask him a question mm. or an issue would arise and he'd say, what think ye? Mm. What do you think? And then he would tell a story mm. and people would get engrossed in the story. And then towards the end or at the end, he would say, so here's a question for you. And suddenly mm. a new dawn would come mm. in the minds of some of those It's interesting, those isn't it? People. Because the stories have become so familiar, the main stories, the parables, we're almost given the interpretation before we hear the story, aren't we? And mm. and maybe that sometimes doesn't give that story the chance to still be fresh and, and have that impact on us that could make the difference. Do you I know think, what I mean? I think that's right, yeah. And I think you should get absorbed in the story, not in the meaning. Yeah. Uh, because I think the other great virtue of the stories was that they allow you ownership of your own decision about what the story means mm. in the end mm. you can take it away with you mm. and think what did i what did i think and feel when i yeah I heard and they're not they don't all apply to all of us do they no. i mean that's the other thing no, i think sure. there is a, a feeling and maybe it's having <clears throat> heard sermons maybe it's even trying to write bible notes about them but there's a feeling isn't there that that oh my goodness where am I in this story what is this story about me yeah. and actually the stories were about different people they weren't all about that's right yeah all about the person who's reading it now you might have been the fatted car <laughs> now you're being rude I think <laughs> we can move on honestly I, I, I was thinking about um, <laughs> really no well I don't know <laughs> I, I was thinking about when we've had to learn that you have to change your thinking and one of one of the the things i remember very very well with one of our children when he was started at secondary school and was finding it very difficult and was coming home in a, a very unhappy state and we had to learn to to move into his it was a sort of mourning for the life he'd known at at um, junior school i think and we realised we had to be in it with him mm. for a while and not try to rush him out of feeling it and saying it. Mm. Um, and it, it was kind of against our way of doing things because we wanted to fix things 
for him. We and we couldn't. We couldn't make it different. No. So I think that, and I think we learned a lot from that mm. over the years. Mm. That simple understanding about what was needed then. well and of course it still applies doesn't it we cannot fix things for people we can only no, we be there and be in it but we cannot make the bad times disappear because we would like to we'd love to and i i remember one translation says that paul says you must mourn with the mourners yes. which is precisely what we're talking about that yeah you're not there to Put on a little show to cheer them up you might do that later on but people need you in there with them i, mm. I think mm. yeah, i was thinking sometimes. adrian about people who have been bereaved and who feel that they are supporting the people you know who are upset for them almost and that they're have i you know that they're having to be almost strong oh, yeah for we've, them. we've heard that again and again yeah. people say well i'm spending most of my time at the moment <laughs> yes. comforting my friends well that's right who are feeling very sorry for me instead of the friends yeah. just just coming in and being in it and not yeah. not not taking all the oh it's so tricky though oh it's, it's very <laughs> difficult yeah we yeah one day we'll we may have already read it a, a list of all the things that people have said comforters oh, say well, to you them. know that you've written about that don't say we may <laughs> well, have already we'll, we'll do that maybe sometime. we'll do that another yeah. time yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah morning with the more mourners and what about this weather if ever the, if ever there was a parable <laughs> of the way life has been recently well you is, have to explain this, this is in the uk well this is in the uk and it's in the north <laughs> and well, no it's over the country yesterday or oh, well, over the country then but yesterday um i was sitting at home and that it was blizzard followed by incredible sunshine followed mm. by blizzard mm. followed by sunshine followed by blizzard mm. and i thought this someone is trying to say something to me here with a blizzard and a sunshine but i don't think they were i think it was just such a a reflection of i mean we we go on about ukraine and probably will for some time but mm. of having that dark event mm. going on behind mm. us and then some other little thing we're going to enjoy today you have that and mm. all these various things and various feelings that happen um there's no there's no way to deal with it all mm. but my goodness it's been uh, strange I, and we're always surprised aren't we i mean actually in march in the uk the weather is often extreme mm. i mean the daffodils come out thinking spring has come the sunshine is here and they lift up their heads mm. and along comes the snow and smashes them down yeah. um it's yeah it 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 is something that we still struggle to accept mm. that that good things and bad things can follow each other and sunshine and stormy weather that blew my windscreen wiper off um yeah, so can was happen yesterday, wasn't it? Yes. We've been, are we, a spring this year was a a wonderful parable wasn't it we've been looking forward to it so much mm -hmm. i know that's when the snow came but the seeing the seeing the daffodils come out is for us well it always has been a joy mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps even more now and I, I was also thinking about the fact that Sometimes you uh, you attain or, or get or whatever a new focus because of some small thing that you read or you hear. And when we started all this recording stuff, which was three, a long three time years ago. ago now, I don't know how long it was, but we yeah. we did loads Two of years, things which were called No Shore in Sight. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was firstly because it fit the idea of being on a journey but also because we had read a piece by Oswald Chambers where he said part of his meditation was that we would be in a position where there was no success and no shore in sight and it was then that you tested whether you were okay or not mm -hmm. uh, because the, the watchwords for many parts of the society are success and reaching something and i think that that got got into the very center of me reading those words and it, it, there's a huge question implied by the challenge isn't there um mm. is that what you want is that is that the safety that you want we're often talking about that as well mm. no sure insight no success he goes on to say 
but you see Jesus walking on the water. Mm. Now, I don't say that as something easy or flip, but there's there's a secret in there and a safety in there somewhere that mm. I think is very important, mm. very important. So what do you mean by that makes the difference? Just that you're open to the possibility of something, a new focus, is, is that? I, I think it draws me back from finding um, solidity in things that are not really solid. Right. I think that's what it is. I think I would rather <clears throat> I would rather be theoretically anyway um, somewhere where I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know whether I've succeeded. But I know there he is, like in that poem you read so well quite often mm. about looking up and seeing Jesus and mm. following him, mm. um, because you've got settled somewhere. Mm. Mm. And we talk about that as though it's easy, you know, mm. you can preach about it. And mm. uh, but the, the there's a a great mystery in there, a great uh, invitation mm. to really think about what that means. I find that really interesting because you know we we have so many images at the moment of people in deep suffering crossing a border and somebody there with open arms or a car mm. or an offer of hospitality and and in the middle of that if you like there is Jesus walking on the water I mean there suddenly is uh, a representation of the best of love yeah. Yeah. and just for a moment you're safe yeah. in the middle yeah. of in the middle of the ocean in a way and it is often people isn't it that can make that difference can just turn something mm. into a, into something that feels okay safe whatever and sometimes they don't even realize how important it is i i was thinking uh, perhaps more negatively really i was thinking of my auntie biddy who mm -hmm. um is my godmother i remember your auntie biddy. <laughs> well she was quite something really she was, and she was yeah. a, a character is what you would have said about mm. very outspoken very true to herself rode a bike all over the place with great energy swam in the sea that sort of a person really mm. and always involved with her church always um absolutely in the center of it and she ended up uh, and and she as she got much much older I don't know if you remember but she had the keys to the church and if mm. anybody wanted to go into the church they would come to my auntie Biddy who would mm. give them the keys or would go over and unlock the door yeah. and and her mobility uh, became that she could hardly move really and a new young vicar oh, yeah, um, do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, seeing you know seeing how difficult she was uh, took the keys away mm. now i know that his motivation will have been looking at her and seeing mm. not the biddy that everybody else knew mm. full of energy and uh and determination and and solidity but this frail elderly person and thought well she shouldn't have the keys he took her life away didn't and he, he took her life away on that mm, moment such a small thing yeah. the opposite to that welcome mm. of um and they could have worked with it, mm. you know. They could have, they could have, they could have managed that really. And then, by contrast, do you remember the person we knew in the south of England who um, had become church warden of a church? Yeah. And um, I know who you're talking about. And yes. he was a person who would never, in a month of mm. a month of Sundays, of he was thought, the least likely Anglican church warden you could imagine. He was for yeah. all sorts of reasons. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and he wasn't convinced that it really was real until a mm. moment when he was given an authority that he was. I can't sort of well, say man, too much, I, but yeah, some, yeah. somebody asked him if they could do something in the church. Yeah, he said no, he won't be able to do that. That's it. And that person went up past him to the vicar. Yes. And the vicar said, "If my church warden says yes. no, then the answer is yeah. no." Yeah. And, and suddenly, in that moment, wonderful. it wasn't just the yeah. words, or, and yeah. it wasn't him wondering whether he'd been kind to, mm. or suddenly, and and it changed him. Yeah. It. Yeah. He was that person, and yeah. and similarly for my auntie Biddy, it changed her. She was that person. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's so tiny the yeah. thing that can make all the difference some things are just silly aren't they I mean I, you talk about 
not uh, about judging people and having to change your view do you remember i was speaking in a sitting room once and there was a a man in the middle of the the room looking straight at me who frowned throughout my talk just glared and his face seemed to get bigger and bigger and kind of <laughs> filled the whole sitting room and i thought i wish you were not here <laughs> and at the end of the talk he got to his feet and he started walking towards me and he came up really close to me till that great big face was in front of me and he said you'll never know what tonight has meant to me and i thought what did to say well i wish you'd just let your face know a little bit of that during the <laughs> but i was completely wrong i don't know i don't know but i i, I thought I'd just say one thing to encourage people you know sometimes if you're you've been alone a lot and you've felt lost and you join a community like a church say and now you're in it and you're part of it and you know the people there and you you don't quite understand it but you you feel they they like you love you yeah value you yeah i just like to say that it doesn't really matter if you haven't grasped it yet if if you if you haven't grasped the, what what the Christian bit is about right, exactly yes, yeah that if 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 you've discovered a love that was what drew people to yeah. the church in the very early days yeah look how these Christians love one another well it is absolutely um, absolutely I, it, we 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 get so panicked by that don't we because we yeah. think well we're not like that but yeah. but actually. Um, that is such a, a lovely thing when you when you go into a church or a room of people and you think they're so nice yeah they're so nice and to, to each feel other. after a long period of loneliness or solitude that that you now belong to something yeah. is massive yeah so i i congratulate all those who've managed that and don't worry too much just uh, take your time and you'll, mm. you'll learn everything in the mm. end mm. so yeah well we've run out of time oh mm. well we love hearing from you and we'll talk to you next week. Yeah, and if you if you know any ways in which suddenly things change. Yeah, little things that have made a difference. That. Yeah. that would be so interesting to hear. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.